We are building tiny houses to stop this pipeline. And it's through our use and occupation of our lands and going out onto our territory and actually living and using our land that's going to stop this pipeline. That's the power that we stand on as Sukhwapmu. We're not going anywhere. This is our nation. We've been fighting for our nation since first contact here. We're not scared of Kinder Morgan, we're not scared of Canada. And we're ready and we're willing to do whatever it takes to stop this pipeline from coming through our nation. America's biggest pipeline company, Kinder Morgan, is pulling out of a controversial pipeline expansion from Alberta's oil sands. But the project faces fierce opposition from First Nations, eco-activists, mayors, the BC government, and even the state of Washington. Now they have a new target. Justin Trudeau's government is buying the existing pipeline and expansion for $4.5 billion and is funding construction this summer. He says exporting oil is key to Canada's economic future and will secure jobs. When you were a little boy, did you always want to own a 4.5 billion pipeline? <laughs> <laughs> We've stepped in, we're going to get that pipeline built, and we don't intend to be the, in the pipeline business for the long term. There is a very strong business case for this pipeline. The project is called the Trans Mountain Expansion. It would run from Edmonton through British Columbia and Sequatmuk Territory, ending in Burnaby, east of Vancouver. It would triple the amount of oil carried to the West Coast. Kinder Morgan says come fall, it will no longer own any aspect of Trans Mountain. We went to British Columbia before Ottawa's announcement to take the temperature of the resistance Trudeau faces. For some First Nations, it's a question of sovereignty, their right to live on the land and protect it. This is dirty money! This is the dark money! That's funding genocide! Kanahus Manuel is an Indigenous land defender with the Sequatmuk Women's Warrior Society. She's a key activist protesting projects she believes infringe on Indigenous rights. We have 10 tiny houses that are being built to block this Kinder Morgan pipeline route. She's leading a group trying to block the pipeline by building tiny houses in its path. She was arrested protesting the Dakota Access Pipeline at Standing Rock and wants to bring the movement north. We're never going to leave. I, I'm, I'm asking this is our land. I'm here in Kamloops, BC. We just found out that there's an oil spill just north of here and Kanahus Manuel wants to go monitor it. So we're gonna go with her. We're gonna follow her as she does that. They're saying that there's a hundred liters that spilled today. They are ensure, assuring the public, they're assuring the Canadian citizens that this pipeline is safe, that they have no concerns about spills. No, there is concerns about spills because there's a spill that happened at a pumping station, a pumping station that they plan on expanding. Oh my God, this is that native lady. We're here at the pump station where the leak happened. Um, they've sent out security and media relations. Um, but we're going to try to find out more information about the leak. What we are requesting is to come in, monitor the area that was impacted by the spill, and we want to talk to someone from Kinder Morgan that's here right now. Is this truck here to haul the, the waste? Oh, so what they're saying is that this truck is bringing topsoil into this area where this spill from Kinder Morgan just happened. And so our concern is, are they covering the spill up? We're just, they're saying that there's no managers or anything from Kinder Morgan that are going to come and talk to us right now. So we're going to stop this truck. No, you've got to stop. you got to stop. We won't let this guy through. Okay, so, and we'll move if over you guys here. can just all make sure that you're out of the way, because we don't want anybody getting hurt, obviously, right? All of you guys move over off the road. When Kinder Morgan detected the leak, it says the station was quickly isolated, and as a precaution, the Trans Mountain Pipeline was shut down. During cleanup, the company removed soil and brought in new soil to replace it. The Ministry of the Environment said the oil did not affect any waterways and the spill was contained to pump station property. 
While the Ministry of Environment initially said 100 liters of oil spilled, the company has since said that number is much higher, about 4,800 liters. Shame on all you workers for working for Kinder Morgan. Are you asking us that we can't go on our own land? What I'm telling you is that you cannot go on this property. This is our land, so are you saying that we can't go on this land? If you can give me a deed that shows that this is your land, then we'll have a good Okay, well, since okay. you're actually interested, could you find the deed? I can't do that. So how do you know it's still land? I'm not going to argue back and forth about this, because we could argue about this all night. But this is the most important argument in British Columbia. This is not their land. First Nations in BC have long said they own the land. In 2014, a Supreme Court decision backed them up, stating that the BC government either needed Indigenous consent for a resource project on their land, or it needed to adequately consult them first. That's what some First Nations say didn't happen with the Trans Mountain expansion. We are building tiny houses to stop this pipeline. And it's through our use and occupation of our lands and going out onto our territory and actually living and using our land that's going to stop this pipeline. That's the power that we stand on as Sukwapmu. You may see a little tiny house on wheels, but this is very powerful. And it's the occupation of our lands that they're scared about because Canada is going to look very bad to the world community to arrest Indigenous people that are living on their home and practicing their way of life. We need to actually live on the land. And that's why we say that what Canada has done is committed genocide, because by removing us from our land, the very essence of our culture and the basis of who we are is exterminating our people. Kanahus calls the resistance in BC Standing Rock of the North. Right now, there's no way of knowing how big it will get. Standing Rock was a massive demonstration in North Dakota against the Dakota Access Pipeline. At its height, an estimated 10,000 people were camping and protesting close to where the final segment of the pipeline was being built. It was a largely peaceful protest. Police used water cannons and rubber bullets on the protesters, leading to violent clashes. Eventually, police moved in and arrested those who remained. Ultimately, the pipeline was finished, and oil is now flowing through it. It was the biggest gathering of all Indigenous nations of all time since colonial history. Indigenous people did that, coming together. And so we say that this is the Standing Rock of the North because it's a big movement against pipelines and the Alberta tar sands. And these pipelines are what's connecting our movements now. We're inside Camp Cloud right now. This is the main resistance camp against Kinder Morgan's Trans Mountain expansion. They've set up the camp right outside of the gates of Kinder Morgan's facility where the expansion will take place. While we were at the camp, we heard that Trudeau was planning to buy the pipeline and Kinder Morgan was pulling out. I bring in my trusty walking stick in the picture. I came to this camp because it was something a little bit more tangible um, action that I can do. I've experienced homelessness and addiction because my, my mother was in a residential school. My mother, father was taken at the age of four from his family and put on a farm. This camp, this feels like what life sh living should be like. Trudeau has said that he will build this pipeline no matter what, it will be built. Yeah. Um, how do you respond to that? I believe he thinks he, that's the way it's going to roll, but no, no. Uh, it's not going to get built. Why not? Because we're going to do everything in our powers to stop it. It should not be built. It can't be built. Not all First Nations are against the pipeline. Some who sit along the pipeline route support it because it will bring jobs and other economic benefits. Aaron Sam Sumakhetsa, chief of the Lower Nicola Indian Band south of Kamloops, held a referendum. His community voted in favor of signing a benefit agreement with Kinder Morgan. Well, we're not that different than many Indigenous communities across the country. That history of colonization, residential schools, has had a profound effect on our people. And this process of um, becoming self-sufficient and empowering our own people takes time. Do you feel any pressure from the effects of colonization? Does that put you in a position or put your community in a position where you feel more pressure to support the pipeline? I feel that 
yeah, when a community uh, is impoverished or is not doing as well as they can when it comes to employment and for sure these type of projects and whether to, whether to support them or not can be difficult. Ernie Cray, chief of the Chiam Indian Band on the banks of the Fraser River, signed a deal with Kinder Morgan. He's one of the pipeline's most vocal cheerleaders. Critics of this community uh, think <clears throat> that we didn't really think about it, that people like us, uh, short brown people somewhere up the Fraser Valley, are capable of doing any serious thinking. These are, uh, in my opinion, kind of urbane, urban, kind of snooty, pasta, uh, latte type folk from Commercial Drive in Vancouver. We're going to take what we earn from the construction of this pipeline with our partners and then drive it back into businesses and enterprises in this community that will probably uh, guarantee employment for our young families in perpetuity. And so this means uh, jobs for us and income for us, as well as it does other British Columbians and other Canadians. I say fuck their jobs, we don't need their jobs. When you go to an impoverished community and that is like lower than the third world conditions of poverty in these Indian reserves, of course those leaders are signing under complete duress. They're creating this divide and conquer tactic amongst our people. They want to see our people fight. But we see beyond Canada's tricks because we've been tricked. Although Ottawa will buy the pipeline, the government still hasn't explained how exactly it will deal with Indigenous opposition. Before it pulled out, Kinder Morgan said it had received support from First Nations along the pipeline route and jumped through all necessary regulatory hoops. Due to ongoing opposition, the company says Canada buying the pipeline represents the best opportunity to complete the expansion. It also says it will work with Canada to find a third-party buyer. A case in the Federal Court of Appeal led by Tsleil-Waututh First Nation could still overturn the pipeline's approval. That decision is expected this summer. We have a lot of support from key um, fighters that were there at Standing Rock that are able to mobilize too here and are waiting actually for us to light the sacred fire here. When we go and bring these out, we will be lighting the sacred fire, so it connects us spiritually.